Hello guys, what's going on today? So today's video, I'll give you some updates on the t -Sturmy. Uh I did not make them last night uh, because when I prodded Gretel with the paintbrush just before I wanted to introduce uh, Hans in there, she literally jumped and attacked the paintbrush. So I'm assuming she could be a little bit hungry. So right now she's eating uh, some super worms right over here. She's got about two in her mouth right now. I fed her three yesterday. So she should be wearing to go tonight. And actually I really want to make this video tonight because it's my one year anniversary of uh, mating teas. If you guys remember last year I mated uh, the P. Peterson and I, Medusa which is Angelo's female and Alfred. So that's a real special day to me for matings. So I'll post them up tonight uh, the video and uh, we'll see how it goes from there anyway so going to the next topic of this video um, mr. divine Jefferson asked me to make this one so without further ado let's get started so this is the 12th Mistbuster video this time I decided to do it on the acanthus curia species so uh, I am going to describe two of the species uh, in this video the Genicolata and the Brocklehursti, but it should also apply to the other members of the genus, uh, like the Suena, uh, Juricola, and Muscola, or something like that. Anywho, without further ado, let's get started. So, these are the common names of uh, these two teas, and they're very identical. So the AB is called the Brazilian Giant White Banded, and the Brazilian giant white knee. So just uh, be careful of these two names. Sometimes pet stores will tend to uh, confuse them. So the Latin names is Acanthoscuria, which is a pretty easy Latin name to figure out. And for the white banded, it's called the Brocklehursti. And the Ginicolata is the giant white knee. As you'll see in the video, these two are exactly identical, but with very few differences. So now the size, the availability, and cost. So these are one of the teas that are exceptionally large. Granted, they don't grow as big as Alassiodora, but having a 7 to 8 inch leg span for Acanthoscura species is pretty typical. So for availability, uh, the Brocklehursti is somewhat rare. The Acanthoscurias is a lot more common, but sometimes if Acanthoscuria geniculatas are not available, some dealers will substitute it with the Brocklehursti since they look exactly identical. So the cost uh, for a quarter inches around here is close to $15, $20. I remember paying my geniculata as a 2 inch unsexed for uh, $50 and my Brocklehursti I paid it for an inch for 50 no for 40 and it's a uh, 5 inch female now okay so the growth rate and the lifespan it's pretty typical of uh, bird eaters they generally are fast growth rate they tend to mature out in three to four years so females will tend to have a 12 to 15 year lifespan Males will live a year after they mature, so maybe around four or five, depending on how well you feed them. So let's get a look at this uh, species before we go on to the care sheet. Okay, so uh, this is my Genicolata and my Brocklehursti. Okay, so at first glance, you'll see that if you compare the Genicolata to the Brocklehursti, you'll find that they are very similar, but with a few minor differences. So, I'm going to show you what a Brocklehursti looks, the Genicolata looks like. Okay, so this is my two inch, yeah, and they kick hairs, uh, suspect male named Derek, who you saw during the uh, tour video. This is what they look like. They have white knees 
So this is why they call it the Brazilian white knee. They come from Brazil. And if you notice the hairs on the abdomen, they have like a red going on. So let me just uh, zoom in and you'll uh, see what I mean. Yeah, you'll see that in genicoladas is that the hairs are straight. Now if you want to compare it to the Brockle Hursty, so this is my 5 inch female named Sasha. You'll notice that the hairs are much more spikier. And they look exactly identical to the Genicolata. So someone asked me uh, how do you tell the difference between the Canthoscuria and the Nandu Chromatis, which is pretty much identical. Well, this is your big difference, is your carapace color. So let me get uh, Nadia out. Here she is. So if you want to compare it to N. chromatis, it look very different. So that's what a Nandu chromatis looks like. And if you want to compare it to what, the Candiscuria, see the carapace colors? That's what makes them the part. And this has much more red hairs versus this one. It just has very slightly. All right, now for the care sheet video of the species. Uh, they like it fairly moist. Uh, my tank is really dry. I have to miss the tank, so keep it humidity around 80% and temperature is always 75 to 80 degrees will be fine for the species. Um, handleability. Do I recommend this tarantula to be handled? I really don't suggest you handling the species. Uh, while it's not that aggressive, it's slightly defensive. The problem is with these species is that they have a voracious appetite. They will eat almost anything that they will get their hands on. So I'll just show you how fast they eat and how well they eat. I'll give you one of my super worms as I'll make a feeding video on Tuesday. So I'll just give one and you'll see how well they eat. There we go. See, they are very hungry eaters. So because of that, they make they may mistake your hand for food. So it's really not a great T2 handle. Um, so I would recommend this for a beginner because it's easy to keep. If so, if you want something a little more aggressive than your B. Smithy or B. Melia or B. Abapolosum. I would st highly suggest this species. It's very colorful too. So about breeding and mating, as far as I'm concerned, I really don't have experience on breeding the species before, uh, but I have read on arachnoboards that they have mixed reviews. Some are successful, some weren't. Uh, but I do remember on the thread saying that they get about to having, I think, 800 to 1,000 babies. So. That's a lot, so that's why mainly Genicoladas are much more common and not as expensive as the Brocklehursty, which you see before you. So I think that pretty much covers it as far as you need to know about them. So this will apply to any other members of the species, like I said, and yeah, I think I touched everything. So once again, an awesome species. I must have in all the collections, albeit the Brocklehursty is slightly more rare than the Genicolata, but as you can see they look exactly identical and that's why pets online dealers will usually substitute Brocklehursties for Genicoladas if they don't have any available. Oh right, yeah, you'll mainly find them in online dealers. Pet stores rarely carry the species in uh, Canada, where I am from. I rarely see these species come up in pet stores. I see the odd OBT, the more common uh, G. rosea, the 
B. Smithy in the Avic Avic, but almost impossible though I see this one. Unless you go to a real exotic pet store that just exclusively deals with uh, reptiles and arachnids. So I hope this uh, video helps with the Mythbusters on the species. So hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned for the uh, Phonal Palma species. I'm going to do uh, one on the A. Anax and the, C. Calco the A. Calcodes. Alright guys, see you later.